the original pitch for Horizon, it was very high level still, but some of the pillars that you see in the game right now were already there. Uh, the female lead named Aloy, uh, this gorgeous natural uh, beauty that the game takes place in, uh, and also the presence as the dominant life form of the machines. The machines turned out to be very much animal inspired. Uh, that is something that the game designers found to be a very natural way for us to portray these machines. We knew basically we wanted them very big, very awesome, and we wanted lots of them. But we didn't necessarily know what the exact look of it's going to be. Uh, we also played basically with more insect-like creatures or more traditional looking robots. But this whole aspect of nature basically, and the maj majesty of nature combined with this much more sort of prehistoric looking creature has really created a very unique setting and a very unique look. There's something basically that in game design they call a tell, that you can sort of look at the creature and by, by how it's animating, how it's behaving, you know what sort of attack it might do and you can sort of prepare for it. Uh, and that's really important and in that regard it really helps that these creatures are recognizable. We came up with lots of ideas for different animals that we sort of wanted to uh, recreate in the game. But also at the same time we were looking for uh, different opportunities for the player in terms of uh, maybe there should be an enemy or a machine that has a lot of loot on them. What kind of machine would fit with that? Uh, so we came up with the Shell Walker. The Shell Walker is basically a walking treasure chest. It has this uh, super valuable loot on its back. So that's, that's kind of where the idea then originates. You want uh, the machine to have a certain purpose in the game. We wanted basically every aspect basically, to have their own robots and of course basically, there are lakes and rivers and other sort of water bodies in our game as well. So the Snap Maw, the crocodile basically was specifically designed to take advantage of those sort of environments and offer the player a new challenge in that environment. So the Snap Maw is uh, one of the enemies that we haven't shown much of. It operates uh, very often in groups. The machine itself is already very dangerous, uh, especially in the water. Fortunately for Aloy we have uh, sprint swimming, so she can swim a little bit more quickly. Uh, but often that won't be fast enough, so you have to be very careful. So Aloy has a unique ability. Uh, she can use her uh, spear to uh, override machines. Uh, the broadheads can, uh, if you override them, you can use them as a mount. But if you override the Watcher, for example, you can turn its faction, so it will fight alongside, it will fight for Aloy. And then we have the Tall Neck. Uh, once she manages to climb the Tall Neck and overrides the Tall Neck, uh, she uncovers a large part of the areas, uh, clears the fog of war in that area, but also reveals uh, machine locations throughout that entire region. She also unleashes a big blast that stuns any nearby machines in the, in the, in the region. So whenever you uh, encounter a machine, uh, you can see it in its idle behavior. But when the machine itself goes into combat mode, that's when the AI basically takes over. There's nothing scripted about it. You will notice that each time you play, it will play out differently because the AI is so unpredictable. But you can learn uh, and study their behaviors and, and, and get better at defeating them eventually. PS4 for the players.